Hi there, and welcome back to the Ms. Artastic Podcast. This is top five tips for new art teachers. Oh yeah, so find the ultimate top five tips for new art teachers to help you navigate and focus your art teaching career to kids. Our education is an amazing opportunity to share to young minds, but it isn't without its challenges that come with the, te- the job of actually teaching. So find the five best tips for new art teachers, first year art teachers or anyone looking to become an art teacher in this episode. You're listening to the Miss Artastic Podcast. Inspiration for art teachers. Here's your host, Kathleen McGivern. This episode is brought to you by MsArtastic.com. If you're a teacher or art educator, you can find ideas, tips, advice, and art resources for art education at MsArtastic.com. Find the link in the description or go to MsArtastic.com now. All right, so I'm going to share the best advice for new art teachers and tips for being an art teacher in this episode. Uh, Teaching art to kids, of course, is a dream job, but it's not without its own unique challenges. So we're going to dive in on to some of my best tips, ideas, and advice to anybody who is new to teaching art to kids. Tip number one is to be organized and get planning. So nothing says stress or panic or anxiety like not knowing what you're going to teach. Or maybe you've done the teaching, but you get to report cards and you literally have no idea what curricular content that you met. So create your scope and sequence at the start of the year. If you want support for doing this with all the templates then and 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 professional development hours, make sure you check out Art Teacher Academy. It is my course for specifically designed for helping art teachers. Um, And you can find the link in the show notes of this podcast episode or go to www.artasticcollective.com forward slash Art Teacher Academy. Um, But essentially, uh, you're going to just map out all your units, right? You need to map out your units of what you're going to teach in what order, right? That is your scope and sequence. What you're going to teach, in what order. And I would print off your curricular content for each grade, the standards that you need to meet for each grade. And as you complete it, or as you write those standards onto your lesson plans, you're gonna check them off to make sure that you did them. And if you wanna be a pro, color code it for each term or report card session. So when you get to report cards, you know. You absolutely know what you taught. You're like, yep, just gonna copy that right into there. Done. Right, so that's my idea. Um, But you need to keep track of this and then use your curricular content pieces or standards as your targets for learning. And this should be top of mind when it comes to planning, right? Not scrolling through Pinterest or Instagram and then making what was like popular, um, some popular art teacher on IG created and then trying to figure it what you, what content that actually met at report card times, right? Like there's a lot of cool stuff happening on Instagram, but you need to make sure it's meeting the standards that you are expected to teach. And maybe it's not even right for your kids or what they're interested in. It's what you like. So you got to Keep th- these things in mind. And so putting your tar- your curricular standards as your target in the forefront of your mind is going to help you navigate this. And then if those cool lessons on AIG happen to meet the target, the standards that you need to meet, then, then that's cool, right? That's cool. But you need to know the path you are taking. That is number one. You need to keep the track, keep track of this, right? And then use your curricular content pieces, pieces or standards as your targets for learning. Again, it needs to be top of mind for planning. If you are organized and have developed your year-long plan or scope and sequence and the units in order, you're not going to be wondering what you're going to teach next, right? Or if you're going to meet the full curriculum. That is the point of the plan. You're creating your roadmap so that you can make sure you see all the attractions on your road trip. This is going to help you move away from some of that stress that has been building Uh, turning bigger and bigger right and then we know what stress is like it just gets bigger and bigger and then suddenly it's this huge snowball that's running down rolling down the mountain until it eventually turns into an avalanche and then my friend all 
avalanches eventually crash. <laughs> All avalanches eventually crash. So if you're looking for resources to help make this planning easier, make sure that you check out the Ms. Artastic TPT store. Um, you'll find the link in the show notes or podcast description for this episode. And there you will find resources to help you plan all the different things uh, you will need to cover, whether it's um, elements of art, principles of design, art critiques and reflections, artists and art history, maybe sketchbook and ceramics, art sub resources, holidays and seasons, themed arm projects, back to school, all your planning for the end of the year and more. I recommend that you visit the Ms. Artastic TPT store you can search Ms. Artastic on TPT and see if anything fits into your upcoming units or in your scope and sequence to help you plan in seconds. My store is something that I've been working on for decades and represents my, over a decade, pardon me, and represents my cumulative works designed to help support art education in classrooms. I work every day to design new art resources to help support teachers at with, and also with teaching strategies and allow them to have themes um, that continuously to evolve evolve and develop, right? So make sure that you have that you have this resource readily available. Save the Mizartastic TPT store to your bookmark bookmark bookmarks bar. Um, so that way it's only a click away and you won't have to try searching on TPT to find it, wasting even more of your precious time. Okay, next is to inspire kids to create with choice-based learning. I think that empowering students with choice in your classroom will really allow to see themselves in your room. And also it's going to give you a bit of a break, right? Instead of dictating every step for every project and then creating every single lesson example, you get to sit back and let the kids take ownership of the idea and the end result. That being said, you can certainly still teach technique, skills or themes, or even explain mediums that they're going to use. But maybe they create their own design, right? and talk with you about it and then create their own artwork. For example, maybe everybody is making abstract portraits with oil pastel. You can teach about contemporary and historical artists and then cr that create portraits and like maybe have discussions or uh, think pair shares or whatever. Um, conversations essentially about why artists make self portraits or portraits like why are artists making all these self portraits not just like in historical times there are still artists creating self portraits right and show you could also even do another lesson on abstract art and teach that movement and then you can even do another le third lesson on uh, that teaches about techniques in oil pastel and then to summarize it kids will come up with a design to show what they learned about portraits um, abstract, the style of creating an abstract and oil pastels. And then you do one-to-one -one student conferencing and then get, then they get to work, right? That's it. They're going to work. After you approve their design, they get to work. They explore the creative process and learning how to make their work. You're not teaching the steps. That's where, this is now where you sit back. You're supporting or guiding them and you're facilitating the learning process. <clears throat> Now you have supercharged your classroom and made it student-centered, choice-based, and art and art fostering. You're you're fostering the ability to be creative, a creative critical thinker, all while meeting a lot of curricular content with one in-depth art lesson or unit. Okay, so next is to plan around student interests. So I strongly suggest that you take the time to find out what your students are interested in. You can walk around and talk with them about it and find out what each of your grade groups are interested in. Write it down because then you can reference that page anytime, right? If you need an idea for an art lesson, that is your, there it is, it's done. Not only are they helping you build a huge idea bank that you can choose from, but when you create lessons around these ideas, you're creating uh, art lessons around student interests and are allowing them to see themselves in your classroom it is becoming student centered. I would take the time to get to know your students and survey, survey them to find out interests. Honestly, this tip is gold. And I cannot state its importance enough. If you're wondering how to get kids interested in your art lessons and engage in your classroom, this is a huge place to start. I know there's a lot of cute ideas on Pinterest and TikTok, but these things 
are just cute for maybe us the adults it's not maybe necessarily what the kids want to make so ask them what they're interested in and sit and talk and get to know them and just record the things that they say you can also inquire about what art mediums they want to try or explore in your classroom and see if you can meet any of their requests you don't need to feel pressured like you have to meet every wish right you're not a genie you're a human but the act of taking, of talking with them, right, taking the time to listen to them builds a relationship with that individual. And if you can meet the request, they will be so overjoyed. Once you have a bunch of ideas written down from all your classes, you can compile them into a document for each grade group or each grade if you like um, that better. And then you can use that as you, um, as your brainstorm for finding ideas for our lessons. Not only are they helping you with finding ideas for lesson planning, but then you are planning your lessons around their interests and are making it again student-centered. And in this way, you are making your classroom a place where they can see themselves and your fostering community. Next is to get the free art teacher focus guide. You can grab the free art teacher focus guide at www.artasticcollective.com forward slash focus um, or find the link in the show notes of this podcast this resource is absolutely perfect for new art teachers and it will give you somewhere to start in terms of finding areas to focus on for self-improvement and development as you dive in on your teaching journey it is a quick and easy guide to give you seven areas of focus to give you a sense of where to start as a first year art teacher it is full of good advice and tips and is of no cost for you you so I would grab that for sure so next is to create and foster relationships in classroom community it is very important that you take the time to build relationships with your students no matter how many there are and no matter what they come with in your classroom um, and no matter how much unexpected behavior there, there is right the foundations of classroom management are around how well you have fostered community and relationships relationships with your students however before you roll your eyes at me because i know that every administrator and district is preaching this this does not mean it solves all the problems like a magic wand right like some people make it out to be what i want to say is that creating and fostering relationships and taking the time to develop classroom community absolutely makes a difference and you can get so much farther with students if you have earned their trust especially the challenging ones the way i see it it is like locked doors right locked doors are barriers and if you're trying to get through the doorway a locked door is pretty frustrating right um your students and you you have no idea how to get through it the door is locked you have no idea how to get through that doorway that's that's the challenge (laughs) there's the problem that's the problem we need to solve your student your students are the locked doors some locked doors are easy to open right they have but like you know like an easy door you know where the key is it opens boom it's nice and bright you're not thinking about it you're not worrying it it just opens right but some doors have like 15 locks there's chains on them they're booby trapped and um just to make sure adults don't enter right for their own personal reasons not all kids trust adults or authority and you need to prove to them with your actions and your words and commitment that they can trust you right you need to earn that trust it's not an automatic thing and when you can't find a key to a door it can be pretty stressful right but once you do it is a lot easier and sometimes you can find a key right away sometimes you're digging through your bag in the dark only to then try every single key on the world's largest key ring right hoping to find that one key that fits in and maybe the lights are not even on so you're trying this all in the dark and you're going by feel you're just guessing but once you find the key everything is a lot easier it is not perfect and you you might still get stuck or hit your toe on the door frame on the way in but it's so much easier to get through the door frame when it's unlocked compared to before. You can get that much farther. If you do not take the time to earn trust or build relationships, sometimes a student is not going to want to learn from you or sit with you and get help, right? It's not an automatic respect thing because you're the teacher. That's not always the case. Um, and. It, the only person that needs to get over that is the teacher <laughs> okay it's just the reality of 
people, of human condition. It is a lot easier to support challenging students or students who do not automatically trust teachers or adults, again, for their own reasons, if you have a key to the door. Sometimes, again, you have to dig through the, the bag for the key ring and scramble, but through 100 keys, right, trying to figure out what's going to unlock that door. But once you find it, the door opens and the panic and the stress passes and that's the point things are a lot a lot easier once the doors open and if you maintain that trust and respect and relationship to a street though it'll stay a lot easier to pass through so if you're looking for more in-depth art teacher training and support and systems to help you move you forward in your art teaching career make sure you check out art teacher academy at www.artteacheracademy.com Nope, that's wrong. Backing up. Let me give you the proper link. www.artasticcollective.com forward slash art teacher academy. So artasticcollective.com forward slash art teacher academy. And the link is in the description of the podcast show notes or on the, or there it's in the description of the podcast. Mm. What is this episode? Yeah. And, or you can find it on the podcast show notes. Um, so if you are again looking for more in-depth art teacher training and support and systems to help you move you forward in your art teacher career, um, or if you are feeling overwhelmed or you have a lot of questions of how to do things better, um, such as classroom management, lesson planning, um, maybe creating a solid scope and sequence where I might walk you through it and provide you all the templates as well, um, or organizing or exploring creativity, then Art Teacher Academy might be the perfect fit for you. Art Teacher Academy is for anyone who is an art teacher, new art teacher, or is becoming an art teacher and wants to achieve confidence, focus, resolve, and art teaching excellence. It's for anyone who has been facing stress in the job and struggle in the classroom or for new art teachers uh, or those in training that are feeling lost and alone without guidance for where to start or how to create highly engaging and structured art lesson plans, um, or maybe are needing some classroom management strategies or systems for organization and time management due to an unforgiving schedule um, and lack of planning time, right? Um, And maybe just ideas for energizing and motivating students to want to participate and create their best work. So if you wanna learn more about this course, go to www.artasticcollective.com forward slash art teacher academy or find the link in the podcast description or show notes well my friend that is the best advice i have for you for new art teachers and top tips for new art teachers um so again teaching art to kids is a dream but it's not without its own unique challenges in your own journey you're going to face a lot but ensuring that you're organized Planning ahead and ensuring that you're building relationships in your classroom will help ease a lot of that teacher stress. Well, my friend, that's Ms. Artastic um, Podcast, and I am Kathleen McGivern signing out, and I'll see you in the next episode. Well, that's it for this episode. Please make sure that you subscribe to the channel, Ms. Artastic. And if you create anything and share it online on social media, please, please, I would love to see it. So take me at Ms. Artastic and I will check it out or join the community and conversation and use the hashtag, hashtag Ms. Artastic. And I will check it out that way as well. And you can see what other people are creating who create with Ms. Artastic YouTube videos. Well, that's it for this episode and I will see you in the next.